I suddenly realized she's not mad at Helen Fisher. She is furious at this man who's dumped her. And I have triggered this in her brain. And it's now, it's called abandonment rage. And as it turns out, when this brain system, this reward system, does not get what it wants, it, it triggers the amygdala and triggers rage. It's called hate rage. So I came to think that maybe I would find in the brain activity in circuits associated with hate rage and with um, romantic love. So I'm going to tell you very briefly what we found, and then I'll quit and, and hear, hear from you. But uh, anyway, I, um, what we ended up finding in the brain was, sure enough, brain region associated with physical pain, not psychological pain, physical pain. So when you're lying on your bed rocking in physical pain, uh, this is part of the rejection response. Also found activity in a brain region associated with the dopamine circuit, uh, showing that indeed you do fall, you remain in love with the person. Found activity in a, a brain region associated with taking risks, big risks for big gains and big losses. That's not surprising. But the things people will do when they've been dumped are just staggering. Also found activity in part of the a lateral orbital frontal cortex in a, in a brain region associated with obsessive thinking. You obsessively think about this person and also with controlling rage. So I began to think to myself, you know, this is a very bad combination. Intense romantic love, deep physical pain, obsessive thinking, and rage, and the willingness to risk. And I'll just simply say that uh, no wonder some people stalk or have suicidal rage or homicidal rage. I mean, now, there's more to stalking than just this brain system because, uh, frankly, I think that when you've been dumped, everybody would like to stalk. You'd like to go, where is he? I mean, you'd like to find out where he is. But most of us have impulse control. And, so, uh, and we're not so narcissistic that we, we do this anyway. So long and short is that uh, I have, we haven't found all of the brain systems associated with stalking, for example, but I think we're on our way to understanding uh, crimes of passion around the world. So I want to end with um, a story and tell you one other thing. But maybe I'll say that thing. I'll tell you the one other thing, and then maybe we can talk about it during the, during the, during as we talk. Um, none of this data about the brain in love, or the rejected brain in love, says a single thing about why you fall in love with one person rather than another. Uh, what it says really about is how you feel when you love. So I've written four books, and number five is going to be why you fall in love with one person rather than another. And what started me in on this was a year and a half ago, uh, Match.com, the internet dating site. They're the biggest in the world. I think they've got 15 million people on it. They're in 22 countries. They came to me two days before Christmas. I was minding my own business. I thought my business was pretty shut down for a while. I could do my writing. I get a call saying, two days after Christmas, would I come and meet the CEO of Match.com? Well, I said, fine. And um, so I went, met these people. There were like 11 of them in New York. At first, I couldn't really understand. I thought that, anyway. Long and short is during the course of the day, by the end of the day, they asked me if I, that I wanted to design a new dating site for them. Um, and I looked at the CEO and I said, you know, I, I'm not a personality psychologist. You know, I, are you sure you got the right person? I, I studied the brain, I, you know. And he said, well, he thought he did. So I said, well, I thought I'd think about it and get back to him right in the beginning of January. So I was at home right before New Year's and I was doing the dishes and I said to myself, you know, you've got to get a grip on this one here, you know. So I said, okay, go in and sit at your desk and get an empty sheet of paper and write down on that empty sheet of paper what you actually think you might know about why you fall in love with one person rather than another. What do you know about personality? So I sat there with that empty sheet of paper and I saw myself write, Dopamine, you know about dopamine. And I know um, that s activity in certain parts of the dopamine system are associated with 
risk-taking, novelty-seeking, optimism, irreverence, uh, flexibility, curiosity, and creativity. There's data on this. So I said, well, if I'm going to work in the real world, I'm going to call this person something. So I decided I would call this person an explorer. So then I took another sheet of paper and I said, well, what else do you know? And I said, well, OK, you know something about serotonin. And uh, so I wrote serotonin on the top. And I said, people with certain aspects of the serotonin system are calm, social, popular. Um, they like to follow rules. They like schedules and routines. They tend to be traditional and conservative. They tend to be religious or spiritual. They tend to be uh, conscientious and um, somewhat ju judgmental. Um, and they're very good at managing people. So I decided I would call, and they're very, very home and family oriented. So I thought I would just call this person the builder. I'd written a book on uh, gender differences in the brain, so I knew something about estrogen. Uh, so I wrote estrogen on my third sheet of paper, and I know that estrogen is associated with imagination, uh, verbal abilities, um, um, uh, uh, people skills, uh, um, uh, um, uh, sympathy, altruism, uh, creativity, flexibility. Uh, um, they're very good with people, so I decided I would call this person the negotiator. And last but not least, I knew something about testosterone. I called this person the director. They tend to be analytical, logical, rational. Uh, we're all rational in our own way, but rational in the traditional way. Um, um, uh, d um, decisive, uh, assertive, and I call that person the director. So anyway, I had these four sheets of paper on types of personality. And I went off to the symphony um, that night with my friend. And on the way home from the symphony, I was walking past Barnes and Nobles. And I said, baby, you know, I think I better go and buy some books on personality. So I went and I bought nine books on personality. And I started reading them. And as it turns out, Plato, Aristotle, Galen, second century, um, Dr. Paracelsus, 15th century, Viennese doctor, Carl Jung, Myers and Briggs, and several others have all basically talked about four personality types. And they corresponded perfectly with my four genetic profiles. So my theory is that people of different genetic profiles tend to fall in love with each other um, for the Darwinian reason that we're drawn to people with a different genetic type so that we can create more variety in our lineage and come to the job of parenting with a different array of parenting skills. So I mean, that's the very basis of, of this uh, chemistry.com um, uh, dating site. I can tell you more about it. But anyway, I'm trying to get to the bottom in, in this next uh, book. And, and what's nice about it is they've already got 850,000 people on the dating site. <laughs> so, and they're all going to come back and tell me who they find attractive and who they don't. So I'm going to have probably the biggest data set in the world of, of who falls in love with whom. So in fact, I'm going to my first wedding next Saturday night. Um, a negotiator man has fallen in love with a director woman. And uh, he met her he, after Katrina. He lost everything in, in Katrina. He came up to New Jersey, got onto chemistry.com, uh, met this girl, Stacy, second grade teacher. And uh, they fell in love. And they went down during her vacation to someplace in the Bahamas where he leapt up, can you imagine, leapt up on the bandstand and um, grabbed the mic and asked her to marry him uh, in this resort hotel. So anyway, the, uh, the wedding is next Saturday.